I have my erector assembled and ready to install. I've applied some thread locker to this front part, adjusted it up and left a gap in my wave washer. A bit of thread locker on both of my screws and nylon bushings and install that thread locker on this pivot screw, thread locker on the nut that holds the ball and socket together. Everything's operating smoothly. My lenses are clean, so I'm ready to go. It's time to install the erector and the scope tube. Before you do that, take a look inside your scope and see if the inside diameter is the same all the way through the tube. This scope is not. As you see right in front of the turret screws, there's a step. So the front uh, portion of this scope is smaller than the rear, and that's going to prevent me from loading my springs uh, from the front. And I'll show you the solution I have for that uh, in a little while. But if your scope tube is the same diameter all the way through, you can go ahead and uh, install your erector uh, in the scope. Mine has the a little locator screw. I'll put some thread locker on that when I install it. Uh, then I'll install my nut using the tool that I made. A couple drops of thread locker on that and you don't uh, have to get carried away when you tighten it. Uh, as tight as you can get it with your finger uh, will be sufficient. Now if you have the three screw mounting system that I spoke of during disassembly, uh, that uh, erector has no ball and socket. Uh, so when you make your elevation and turret adjustments, uh, the, it has to pivot on those three screws. So you don't want to overly tighten those. The scope that I disassembled that had that design had RTV around the screws to prevent them from backing out. Uh, hopefully you found an O-ring that you can put in uh, your scope tube to uh, help keep that erector uh, centered uh, because I don't think you're ever going to have an accurate scope with it pivoting on those three screws alone. So you have your erector in the scope tube. You next want to install your springs. Uh, you'll need some long needle nose pliers. If you don't have those, uh, you can take a little spacer block and a couple long splints of wood and some electrical tape and make you a set of tongs that you can uh, use to insert the spring uh, into the scope tube. You insert your spring until the front of the spring is just touching uh, the erector. The upper bend is going to go in the tube first. Once you have it in position, you can use your wooden dowel to push it on into place. Most scopes have a groove cut inside the tube uh, for this downward bend to a latch into, and you'll hear that snap uh, when you push it into place. If you made the helper springs, uh, then you can install those uh, now as well. Your original spring was positioned in your scope between the two turrets. Your added springs will be in line uh, with the two turrets. When you get them installed, they'll be much closer than they appear uh, in this picture. Uh, they'll be uh, almost touching one another in the tube. Here is my solution to getting the erector in this scope. This is a piece of PVC pipe. Uh, it measures 5 eighths of an inch on the outside diameter. You could use a wooden dowel uh, or even a stick. I've used tape to build this end of the pipe up until it's the same diameter as my erector. I insert my spring into the scope tube and position it. The uh, hook is going first since we're working from the rear of the scope. insert my pipe at 
this point it's holding my spring and I pull the pipe through until I feel it compress my spring. Now I can insert my other two springs and put them into position. I'm not going to do that right now. Put my erector in the scope tube. Pull the pipe out. And there my spring is in place. Had I positioned the other two springs, uh, they would all be uh, in position in the scope tube. I have my erector installed, I have my reticle installed, and I'm ready to close the scope. Of course, I need to put my magnification ring on. Uh, you notice I have lubricant on those O-rings. I use dielectric grease. You can pick that up at the auto parts store in a little small packet. Uh, it is uh, the grease that you use on spark plug wire boots. But lubricate that up. All the O-rings in this scope will need some lubrication uh, when you close it. Uh, but I'll install the magnification ring in my screw. Uh, you can put some thread locker on this screw, but it's not really necessary. I'll run my uh, jam nut up for my ocular bell. I'll install my ocular bell. Uh, you remember the nut that was inside? A couple drops of thread locker uh, and uh, install that nut. Uh, then I'll lubricate my O-ring and install my ocular lens. Make sure that your lenses are clean before you close the scope. You can check them by shining a light across the lens and uh, you'll be able to see anything that's on them and uh, clean those up. Once you have the ocular lens installed you can adjust the focus on your reticle. Just rotate this eyepiece until you have a sharp image of your reticle. Then you can close the scope by installing the objective lens. Make sure the lens is clean, lubricate the O-ring, the two notches for your tool, uh, go to the outside, three of the lens into the scope tube, use this measurement that you took when you disassembled the scope uh, to get the uh, lens threaded into the tube at the correct depth. Now these scopes are filled from the factory with uh, nitrogen or argon. Uh, the reason for that is to control moisture inside the scope tube. Uh, anytime you have uh, temperature swings uh, and there's moisture present, uh, there's a chance of condensation developing and you don't want that on the uh, internal lenses of the scope. The only control I have over that is the environment that I assemble the scope in. So I try to find a time when the humidity is really low uh, to close the scope. Uh, you can close the scope and open it uh, quite easily by removing the objective lens uh, when you have a good day to do that and let the scope dry out. Uh, if you have a gun cabinet with a dehumidifier, that would be a good place to uh, store it with the lens out and let it dry out. Uh, I've also thought of maybe uh, putting a, a little desiccant bag like comes in electronic equipment uh, to help absorb moisture inside the scope. Uh, that's just a thought. I've never had a problem with condensation on the lenses. I just try to close the scope when uh, the relative humidity is low. You could store uh, the scope uh, by an AC vent uh, in the summer and uh, dehumidify it somewhat in that way. Again, that hasn't been a problem for me, but it possibly uh, could be an issue. Let's discuss adjusting the scope. I've already mentioned that you adjust the focus for your reticle using your ocular lens. Uh, you need to look at a light colored background when you make that adjustment. Uh, just rotate your ocular lens until your reticle is in focus. Your next adjustment is your parallax adjustment. That's accomplished with your objective lens. You need to be on a steady rest when you make this adjustment. I adjust my parallax at 100 yards. You begin by looking through your scope and rotating your objective lens until your target is in focus. 
Best way I can describe parallax is maybe with this drawing. If your parallax is correct, when you look through your scope and you move your head up and down left and right, your reticle will remain on the center of the target. If your parallax is incorrect, when you move your head up and down left and right, the reticle will appear to move on the target. To correct that, it'll just take some slight movement uh, of your objective lens. Now on higher magnification scopes, this becomes more pronounced. Uh, if you have your parallax correct at 100 yards, it may not be correct uh, at 25 or say 500 yards, and that is the reason for your adjustable objective. Now something that I do, when I get my parallax adjusted, I clean these threads on my objective lens. I put a couple drops of thread locker on the threads. I run my uh, objective lens cover up till it contacts the scope. And then I back it out one half turn. I now have an adjustable objective. The gap between the cover and the tube is hardly noticeable. No moisture will enter the scope because the scope is sealed by the O-ring uh, on the objective lens. I've mounted and zeroed my scope and after 100 grams or so it's still spot on. So I'm satisfied with my repair. There will probably not be many situations where you'll need to uh, repair your own scope. Uh, in this case, I didn't feel like I had any other option. But it's always nice to know you can if you need to. Most of the scopes i repaired have been inexpensive scopes and they're all still functional. Uh, the homemade reticle uh, works great and I don't feel handicapped at all when I use it. I hope you enjoyed the video and again, thanks for watching.